Hi there. In this quick video, hopefully you can get all the information you need to get started with your next or even your first needlepoint project. I'm going to quickly go through the difference between a four ply or tapestry weight wool and a two ply cruel weight wool. I'm going to talk about starting threads, stitching threads, using the continental stitch, which is my favorite, and I think the simplest of the, the needlepoint stitches. Um, and then, of course, talk about ending a thread. So hopefully you'll be ready to go after watching this video. Okay, first of all, um, the difference between needlepoint yarns. Um, I prefer using wool yarns. I always go for 100% wool. I think that um, they make beautiful heirlooms. They really stand the test of time and the colors are really beautiful. So the most tr traditional needlepoint yarn um, is the tapestry weight yarn. It is a four ply yarn, which basically means there are four strands of wool spun together. It is thicker and that means it's not necessarily appropriate for all types of canvases. It, um, if you're using too thick of a yarn and too small of a hole, it's going to get stripped um, and it's going to be harder to pull through. So you can do it. It's, it's going to look fine, but it may not be as pleasant to go through. Um, and, you know, that is why I have moved to actually using a cruel weight yarn, which is a more of a two ply yarn. You can see there's two thin threads pulled together. And what you do to equal the beautiful thick coverage that a tapestry weight yarn would typically give is you just double up the strands. You, you hold more than two strands together. And I think that this results in an easier um, process of pulling the yarns through, of actually stitching. And also it it means that you're not stripping any fiber off of your yarn um, and you're not crowding the stitches. It also, I feel like, allows the canvas to lay flatter and get less distorted than, you know, a bunch of thick stitches, which sometimes can distort that canvas. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through, just in case you're using this tapestry weight yarn, um, how to knot it off and how to um, really thread it through your needle. Um, and I'm gonna do the same for the, the two ply yarn. So first off, I have a length of tapestry yarn cut and you really want about a 15 inch length. That's the right distance that your shoulder isn't gonna be pulled out every time you're you know pulling the yarn through. Um, and it's enough to work a pretty, a decent sized section. So to do the tapestry weight yarn, you're only using one thread because it's so thick you don't need any more than this and you just thread it through the needle and it can be tricky so if you are having trouble um and your needle's gotten a little frayed as it's sitting in your bag or maybe it's the end of the the skein what you want to do is just simply cut it at a very sharp angle with your scissors and then you will be able to kind of get that point kind of wiggle it through the needle a little better. All right, so now you have one strand and you just wanna knot the end of one strand. You don't wanna knot two together. That means um, you're doubling up the, the yarn and it will be way too thick. So how I like to knot is I just simply wrap it around my index finger and then I use my index finger to pull back against the thumb and it's really simple. So that's how you would knot off a tapestry weight yarn or four ply yarn. Um, and when you pull it through, you'll only be pulling one yarn through, through the canvas. Now we'll go to my, my favorite uh, yarns, which are the two ply cruel weight yarns. I love Appleton um, because I think their colors are the most beautiful and it's the most widely available. Um, okay, so getting one thread through, getting it, sorry, a two ply yarn through the needle is much easier. Um, but as you can see, it's a lot thinner than that, that four ply yarn was. 
it's much thinner. So you need to hold the two strands together. Um, and basically what you're getting is four strands when you pull it through. Uh, two plus two equals four, obviously. So that's what, what you're gonna be stitching with. To do that, you can do one of two ways. This is the first way, which is taking that um, longer strand. In this case, this is a 30 inch strand. So when it's doubled up, it's going to be about 15 inches. And then you just simply do the knot as before. Um, and I'll do that once more so you can see you wrap around your index finger and then just pull it back against your thumb. And that's how you can use the two ply yarn. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what's happening with the needlepoint canvas. I'm gonna be working a tent stitch and specifically a continental stitch. Um, it is the classic needlepoint stitch, which goes, it's a slanting diagonal that's covering an intersection of the canvas. And it goes from the lower left to the upper right, always the lower left to the upper right. And there are lots of different tent stitches, but they all look the same from the front. The difference is really in how they look and cover in the back. The continental stitch, this is how it looks from the front and on the back, you can see it's covered. And they're also diagonal stitches, a little messier um, than the front, but you know, rarely are people looking at the back of your work. Um, so uh, that's just kind of the construction of this stitch. So how you do it, how you wanna start the thread is you have it knotted and this is a waist knot. So what that means is we're going to cut off the knot um, pretty soon after we get started. So you put the waist knot down. So you're gonna poke through the front of the canvas and you're gonna do that about five stitches, five to seven stitches from where you ultimately wanna start. So let's say I wanna start here. Well, let's say I wanna start here. I poke it back up through I poke it back up through uh, the canvas, and this will be the bottom section of my stitch. So I'm doing it, you know, one row of, of squares lower than I ultimately want to stitch on. So I have the stitch going here, and I'm just gonna, you know, you're going from the lower left to the upper right, so lower left to upper right, and I'm just crossing that intersection. So lower left of this quadrant to the upper right. And you just keep stitching like that in a line. And what you're doing is you're encasing this thread tail in stitches, cocooning it really. And ultimately, it's going to secure that thread so we can cut off this ugly knot on the front. So we're, we've reached the knot and I'll show you what the back looks like. It's really secure. It's encased in stitches. So we can go ahead and cut off that knot, being very careful not to cut the canvas. And we can keep stitching. So I'm just going to stitch over that one little section. So moving across that intersection from the lower left to the upper right. Now, doing the second row, I'm going to go down. You actually go from the upper right back down to the lower left. So it's the exact opposite from the upper right back down to the lower left.
And then on the third row, again, we're going lower left to the upper right. Lower left to the upper right. And how you know how to do this is if your stitches are starting from the right side, that means you, your stitch should go from bottom to top, lower left to upper right. If you're starting from the left side, as we did in the second row, you're going from the upper right back down to the lower left. I once heard this heard this described um, as if you're thinking about you're you're going on vacation um, and you're going on vacation from Texas to New York. That's your your first flight from Texas to New York. If you're thinking about this kind of as a general map of the United States, and then on your return trip, so so the row going back, you're going from New York back to Texas. from New York back to Texas. The upper right back to the lower left. So I'm kind of cognizant that I'm nearing the end of my thread tail. Normally, you know, if I were stitching a project, I would, I would cut it closer, a little closer. But when you're at about three inches, three to three to five inches left on your thread, it's gonna start getting harder to pull the needle through um, because you're getting less and less thread um, behind it. So you're gonna wanna start thinking about ending your section. So I'm just gonna do that here again. I, ha I have, I'm just getting kind of low on thread. Okay, so we'll turn it over and the back, you can see it looks like a bunch of, you know, little diagonal slash marks, a rougher version of the front. And what I'm gonna do to end the thread is just simply put my needle back through about five stitches, five to seven, and pull it through, cut it off, simple as that. And now you have a beautiful little needlepoint section. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.